Yo, somebody said, and I quote, yo, I don't know about you, but I drive a truck. And if I see Tom Thibodeau driving on the road, I might have to, you know, try to nudge him off the road. Like, and I'm like, what? Yeah, what is going on, New York? Welcome back to another episode of Nick Snodimus. Episode 84. 84, baby. Would have been 85, but unfortunately, health health comes first. You know what I mean? So That's my bad. Sorry, I kind of got sick out there. But now I'm playing injured. <laughs> yeah, that's a long story. Don't, don't show the it. don't. Do not show it. Do not show <laughs> no, I'm not, it. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> but but, but just, let's just say I'm only playing with one hand today. <laughs> yeah. That's the my other boy. hand is out of commission. My boy was attacked by a bowl of pasta. No, not the pasta. The water. Well, yeah, the water, the water of the pasta. Yeah. Boiling water, to pain, be specific. Painful stuff, man, painful stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, yo, no need to apologize, Stevie. We all understand life throws unexpected things at us, and we must follow through. So here we are. I'm just happy to be back. Um, yo, bro, Coach great Knicks, to- man. I'm, I'm hyped. Oh, oh man, I think people would not agree with you on that one. Is that there's a 50 50 on that one? Actually, I think well, the well, majority... I'm not happy about what I want to talk about, but I'm just hyped for talking next. <laughs> okay, you know what? That I can, you know what? That's 100% respectable. Um, true, true fan, true fan stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, what I mean? I'm not happy with what I'm going to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, true fan stuff. So, honestly, yo, I don't think it's been a great week to be a fan at all. I mean, the Giants lost the playoffs. I'm a Cowboy fan. We I'm lost the playoffs. Fan. Yeah, we got smacked. But we have good things to look forward to in the future, so I'm not too upset. And to top it all off, the Knicks are currently on a four-game losing streak. Where are we okay. now? Like, we're in, I think, eighth, ninth? We like are that. We are in eighth or, or seventh. I'll go check, seventh, I'll eighth. check right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go check that out since we asked. Uh, Eastern Conference. Oh, we're seventh. We're seventh, and we are a half game out from the Heat. Heat are 26 22 or 25 23. So we're a game out, a full game out. Well, looking at this schedule, we we're gonna be looking more than a game out. But okay, before we before we even get any into this, let's get the first a shout out out the way. Shout out to the Nick's anonymous family. We love you guys. Uh shout out to everybody who'll be chatting us uh on Instagram, which by the way on Instagram, Stevie, tell the kind people where they could find us. Uh sure. Follow us on Instagram at Nick's Anonymous. Uh follow us on Twitter at is it is it anonymous Nick's or Nick's anonymous? I know we got a new account. Nick's anonymous with a Z. Nick's anonymous with a Z instead of K N I C K S. Can I K N I C K Z? Anonymous. Uh, so Nick's anonymous on Twitter. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> you can also find us on TikTok at Nick's anonymous. We're not too active on there, unfortunately. I always say we're gonna be more active, but. It's work. getting better. I posted a, I, 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 I post shorts on there, so it's we. It is getting updated as the day goes on, so it's it's getting better. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. okay. And you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, and Breaker. Yes, and you always. If you want, if you want to chat with us directly, always go to the Twitter. Um, honestly, direct message on Instagram works just fine as well. But usually, we're just more talkative on Twitter. And uh, speaking of Twitter, um, Stevie finally got the. Oh yeah! Oh my God, dude! I was right. That is the, the honor. Playground. He got the honor to join yeah, his dude. first oh spaces. God. Now, for those of you that don't know what his spaces is, is um, pretty much it's just like a, a Discord or a chat room for you know people on Twitter. So you can join, and you know it's a big group of people just talking. Um, so obviously we follow Nick's Twitter. So the majority of if not all of them, of the spaces are just Knicks. So uh, Stevie, tell tell me what you what you what you broke down the this fan base on, dude. Uh, how long are we on? How long how long would you say we've been on Twitter? Uh, I think maybe I'm I'm gonna say a year. I'll give us a year. Nah, nah, it's been a little shorter than that. It's going on a year. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll go with that just for the sake of argument, bro. Oh my god, dude! Calling it the Devil's Playground is an understatement. 
calling it toxic is an understatement. You know what I would definitely call Twitter? A very undecided place. It's full of angry people who do not know what they want and what will make them happy. And in Nick's universe, that has taught me that, at least as far as from what I've learned from being on Twitter, because this is my first, I've never been on Twitter my whole social media life like me personally like my social media life consisted of um aol chat rooms myspace facebook let's Instagram. get a thumbs up let's get a thumbs up for who could relate come on don't leave stevie hanging yo for, give, you know give I mean? stevie like, likes if you relate i know what i'm talking about <laughs> give stevie the likes come on um i stopped at instagram and then i never did twitter we only did twitter for nick's anonymous mm-hmm and from what I've learned, <laughs> there are four sections of Nick fans. There's possibly more, but I get four main ones. Have your optimists. I would say we fall in that in that category. Mm -hmm. For the most part. For the most part. I say for the most part. You have. I tend to fall into the. Uh, no, I'm gonna let you finish, and I'll I'll let you know where I where I fall down. Right, where I where I'm no, down I bad. Fall in a, I fall. I fall in a couple of different categories. We fall into optimists a little something. This is our category. We're very much realists. Okay. Yes. You have your optimists. You have your realists. You have your complainers that all they do is complain nothing more but you know what i mean like even if their complaint is fixed they'll find something new to complain about like it's just how it is you know what i mean like and right then, off rip like even when yeah. the solution comes it's right after the solution like you know what i mean and then the, the, there's the last one you're gonna say and, and a lot of you are gonna say to yourselves hey didn't the complainers fall into that list too no you don't have to be negative to complain you can just be a complainer you know you're never happy okay doesn't make you negative it just means you're never happy just never happy that fourth list is the toxic ones and that's what i experienced in the spaces that's a special breed man special special breed dude like, yeah, yeah, i ain't never yeah, yeah i ain't never yeah I never yo listen yeah i ain't never experienced toxic like nick's twitter man oh my god Stevie, tell him, tell him what you, what you... Let me tell you something. Dude, Go ahead, bro. Tell me something, please. He called... You You called me, right? Um, I forgot how. One of us called each other. Well, whatever. I think you called me, and I just put you on to it. Okay, well, whatever. One of us called each other, and what happened was he said, yo, I'm listening to the space. This shit is crazy. And in my brain, I'm like, you know what? I got to start listening to the space sports and get more active because it's been a long time since I've listened in on the space anyway. Cause like I did, I know about the spaces. I participated before actually. It's just been a long time since I've done it. Um, dude, oh my god, dude, the moment I walked in, matter of fact, no, no, here's what happened. I remember what happened. I said, all right, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna call you back when I'm done listening. It took me like three minutes to call LJ back. <laughs> I joined. I joined on my other account because I just wanted to... three minutes to call him back. I was like, yo, bro, did you hear what? I just heard, let me tell you what somebody said in the space. Okay, look, I have no problem with people having opinions. If you don't like certain people on the mix and you want them to go, or you want them to be traded or you want them to be fired, whatever, that's your opinion. Everybody has their reasons. But the level that some people hate some people in the Knicks organization is crazy. Yo, somebody said in our quote, yo, I don't know about you, but I drive a truck, and if I see Tom Thibodeau driving on the road, I might have to, you know, try to nudge him off the road. Like, and I'm like, what? Like, I had to leave the space and call you. I was like, yo, bro, did you hear what that dude just said? That's a death threat. That's crazy. Yo, I'll put that into perspective, bro. I am not, you know, and everybody else knows, I don't like LeBron James. I am not the biggest LeBron James fan out there. Um, I won't go as far as to say I hate the guy, but I'm not a fan. My dislike for LeBron James has never gone that far, bro. 
to the point of death. You never wanted to. To the point of me wanting to nudge me off the road, you know. Like, <laughs> for me, bro, it's just my dream to go to a, to a game live and be like, boom. That's as far as it goes for me. You don't want to. You don't want to. I want to boo him in the game. I want him to be like, yo, that dude right there needs to calm down. Like, I want. To... <laughs> you don't want LeBron to burn at the stake. No, nah, he don't have the bird at the stake, bro. <laughs> Dude, like, I mean, he is one of the greatest players of all time. I'll never doubt that. You know, I'm just not a fan. That's all. Some people take this shit too far, bro. Like, that kind of weirded me out, bro. And like you said, it's weird because they're fans that he's on our team. Yeah, like, it's even you, weirder. Like, LeBron's yeah. not on our team. So, so you, he, you would... Ex- you, it's, 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 it's acceptable, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, you would expect, you would expect that kind of you know, hatred towards somebody on the opposite team, not somebody that's in your own, like, organization. Yeah, but even so, I'm not trying to nudge him off the road. That's just weirdo shit. I mean, oh. There goes the Damn. quarter. Damn it. There's the first quarter of the show. Damn it. Well, okay. Yeah, three dollars yeah, now. Oh, damn. Wow. Okay. So we almost had a happy meal. That's what's up. That's not what's up. But whatever. But, um, yeah, listen... Look it. I'm sure he meant it as a joke, but you don't joke around like that, bro. You don't. You just. You don't. Yeah, that's do kind that. of far, bro. You can. You can joke like and say, "Yo, it's on site." It'd be different if you say that. Cause I know you're literally. Cause I know you're not gonna literally go see Tom Tibbetto and challenge him to a fight. I know you're just joking. But when you say shit like, "I drive a truck," if I see him, cause you're being kind of specific, you know. Yeah, that's mean? that's very specific. Like now I, I know. Now I know what car you drive. Like yeah, you know I mean like. I wanted I wanted to know in what scenario and what like what kind of car Tibbs was driving. Like was it a was it a Bugatti? Like I don't know. Knowing Tibbs is probably the worst <laughs> car ever, dude. Because remember, he's oh he know he does his basketball. As long as it gets to point A to point B, he good. That's not good. So his car is probably gonna break down, just like the team. Anyway, let's <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um Okay, so let's usually we start with the Twitter talk, which we kind of just did basically but right now we're just gonna go through the games and then we're gonna like just go through specific points with like what's been going on thus far right so the first game on our list is the toronto raptors my oh my what a game what a one, game. the first one or the second one uh the first one oh the Martin the king yes we're going in order that's right happy martin luther king that is correct um, listen, uh, final score, 123-121. Uh, what a way oh, to go into the overtime, by the way. Big shout-out to RJ Barrett. Which should have been an and one. Yeah. I think we got robbed there. That should have won the game. Okay, wait, 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 bro. Bro, answer me, answer me very honestly. That was a foul, bro. No, 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 no. Is Barrett making the free throw? I think he does. He shows up against Toronto. Remember, he's Canadian. Okay. Okay. He makes that free throw. In that game, he makes that free throw. Okay. For sure, he makes that free throw against the Raptors and the Celtics. Any other team, I'm not sure. <laughs> Just because it's Toronto. Okay, I understand. I mean, he did score 32 points, so, you know. He had a pretty good, he had a good game, bro. You can't, like, you can't take it away from him, bro. Like, he was, he did work. Randall killed too, man. 15 rebounds. That's crazy. His defense, his defense was exceptional as well. Yo, he had a bunch Siakam. of good. Yo, the effort was there, man. But um, listen, yeah, you guys are gonna find the pattern throughout these games, and this is like the main problem of what we're dealing with right now. Uh, so the the Knicks had a lead again. Whoop de do. Uh, totally not a problem according to some people. Yeah, so we had we had a we had, so look at we had a lead, right? The Knicks led one hundred and one to ninety two with five and a half minutes to play in regulation, right? Uh, Toronto then went on a twelve to three run, capped by five straight points from Red from Van Fleet. To that tie been a it, problem for us this year, bro. To tie it at one hundred and four with one thirty remaining, so that means in four minutes, pretty much, you know, twelve they scored twelve points in four minutes, and we only scored three. So we have, that's, we, have, we have a Fred Van Viet problem. So that tied the game, right? Then we go into free throws, right? So uh, Scotty Barnes shoots free throws. He misses one, 
which then leads to R.J. Barrett grabbing the ball, running down court, and dunking Dang home it. for the for the overtime, which should have been you should have won. That. won. You should have won that, and we got robbed. At least that's just my opinion. That was yeah. an and one, and Matt. A lot of people said it. Like we're not. Like, there's the only pictures. Ones there's there's literally it. pictures that you can see. Like they're zoomed in, and you see his his arm just mess that one up. NBA. You know what I mean? No, no. It's been like that all over the league. I heard. Not for nothing. I mean, we should. I mean, but the Knicks messed it up in overtime too, man. Because the Raptors just took control. Oh yeah, it was terrible. It was it was bad. It was real bad. It wasn't it wasn't the game that we saw before OT. You know what I mean? And that goes back to the whole gas the the, the nine man rotation. You know, and the 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 scarcity of minutes going around. Uh, so you know you're not really using all hands on deck. Listen, Cam. <sighs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean, bro. Thank you, man. You know all it's. You got you got you got bench guys average. We'll, we'll, we'll get into tips later. Yeah, we'll get into Tibbs later. Okay, so you know what? Let's just leave it at that then. You know, th- this was a good game. Okay, we gave we we stopped the guy we needed to stop, which was Siakam. Unfortunately, Fred Van Vliet had thirty three points and Scotty Barnes had twenty six. We cannot, uh, yo, we let Scotty Barnes look like Magic Johnson. The length, bro, like you said, like Toronto's length. Hell, even in the next game against Washington, we had a length problem with them too. No, we're having a length problem overall, like. Overall. No, but it showed, and like I think this week it's showing a lot. This week it's showing, as far as like our height, our height problem goes. This week it's kind of showing, cause I can't front when you called me, cause you were at the Washington game. You had called me and said like, "Yo, they're just shooting over us." I started noticing that too. I was like, "Oh wow, he's right." Like, oh no, one of them shots are going in easily, <laughs> bro. Like, like we're eighth graders, like we're we're on an AAU team or something. It's not good. So, you know, that, that goes into, like, one of our other segments. But, you know, you guys will see that. You guys will catch on. So that was the Toronto Raptors game. You know, uh, heartbreaking defeat. And fun fact, little Snapple fact, you know, you know, I, you know, I got gotcha. you. Um, when we lost Toronto last time, which was last month, the Knicks went on a five-game losing streak. We are currently on a four. That's crazy. What are the odds of that? Last time we lost to Toronto, we went on a five-game losing streak, including them. Toronto now beats us, and now we're on a four-game losing streak. Hmm. So there's something about Toronto that just doesn't sit well with the Knicks organization. It's just the length. They, they're a matchup issue for us, bro. Any like They're a matchup issue with anybody, though. But particularly us, because, like, we, we're, we're a shorter team, obviously. Dude, you know, RJ's the, not a legit three. He can't play the three, but he's not a legit three. Bro, the magic beat them. <sighs> the magic beat them. Magic beat the Raptors. I mean, remember, dude, we, we got a better record than them, though. Yeah, bro. But, but I, I don't know, man. Listen, you, you know it's bad when you, got, when you got Raptors fans joining the spaces talking about why aren't you beating us. It's bad, bro. It's real bad. That's real bad. We should be beating these guys, dude. I'm not going to lie. They're struggling. They're having a bad year. You know, <sighs> Scotty Barnes should not have no 26 points, man. I Look, dude, I, dude, I he was get... last year's rookie of the year. Dude. Scotty Barnes is good. Don't sleep on him. Nah, bro. Not no 26. Toronto, dude, Toronto is better than what their record shows. Let me let you know that, that now, bro. Because they're... They, sorry. I'm sorry about that. No, you're good. <laughs> Uh, they are not a crappy team, bro. Like they, they are way better than what their record shows. So um, I agree, but with the with the amount of defensive presence we have, bro, Barnes is the last one that I would be expecting to have twenty six. Uh, I'm not shocked. They're a skilled team, bro. Again, like I said, they cause they they particularly cause a matchup problem for us because of our height. But it's not just us. It's everybody in the league. Don't you notice, like, um, whenever um, the announcers talk about Toronto, they always talk about they made a comeback the last game. Like, they were down. They came back. They lead the league in steals. That's Van Fleet, I mean? They have too, a lot. You know what I mean? They have a lot going for them. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're a bad team. Listen, I 
I start, I'm thinking, look it, this is just a theory, and I don't know, you could agree to disagree. The teams that are, the teams that had a slow start are starting to awaken. I feel like as of right now, the truth is being told within the league. And what I mean hey, by you. that is that the teams that are below us are going okay. to start winning. And I think, I bro, because remember, we, we've we always said we're an average team, right? Uh -huh. that's, that's what we're falling to right now. Because right now, we're still above average. We're still above 500. But, bro... The way the schedule is looking, we will. I don't know, bro. I think we will most definitely fall under 500. I don't know, bro. Just think about this. All right, right now we're 25 and 23. It's 48 games. It's 48 games in. We already have 25 wins. How many games did I predict we'd win? 44. 44. We only need 19 more wins to reach that, bro. But look at the teams in front of us. Ah, uh, you know what? <laughs> Look at the teams in front of us. Who we got? We got the Cavs, the Celtics, the Nets, the Lakers, the Heat, the Clippers, the Sixers, the Magic, the Sixers, the Jazz, the Nets, the Hawks, the Wizards, the Pelicans, and the Celtics. Bro, the easiest game I heard in that that lineup was the Magic, and we might not we and we may have problems with them. We're pulling off a lot of those games, bro. Don't sleep. And we're going to lose some. You know what I mean? I I'm not denying what you're saying. You're not wrong. The potential's there that this could be disastrous looking at the no looking at the schedule. But I think we're going to pull some games out that a lot that most don't expect us to. Like, I think we're counting ourselves out a little too early because of disappointing losses, bro. Because remember, bro, we're not supposed to be here. We're way ahead of schedule. At least as far as this season goes, bro. Most people didn't have us here. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, um, we're currently the seventh seed, one game out from the six. You know what I mean? Like a little three, four game winning streak. We're the fifth seed. And listen, you know I, mean? like, I, I, I know. I get you. I get you. I, I hear you. It's unfortunate that we have to do it against the highest teams in the nba right now dude the power the, bro like in the nba right now the seed between three and all right the, look at it this way we're gonna leave out the celtics and the sixers they're the top seeds they got that on lock at least for now they got that on lock we'll look at three through nine the bucks are 29 and 17 paces are the ninth seed they're 23 and 25 that means we're like somewhere in the middle there at 25 and 23. Bro, we're in decent shape. We're in decent shape, bro. I wouldn't panic the way most Nick fans are. You know, do we have concerning issues? Yeah. Are we a finished product? No, obviously not. Far from it. Far, 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 far. Oh, from agreed. It. Oh, agree agreed. I won't argue that. Far um, from it. But I don't think we're the disaster that most people are projecting us to be, man. I don't, I don't think it's I don't think it's a I don't think it's a disaster. I think it's just more of a disappointment. Now I can't lie. There are games we let go that we should have won, and we talk about that all the time. So you don't like, you don't even have to go there because we mentioned that all the time. I won't deny that. But I still think we're the decent place, considering. You know what I mean? Like we already passed the halfway point. The halfway point is 41 games. We're 48, we're 48 games in, and all we need is 19 more to reach what I predicted we would get. It's very ugly. It is. I'll say that. It's it's okay. very Oh bro, the potentials there it can get ugly. I won't deny that. No, no, it's 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 ugly. It could get uglier. That like okay. it's it's ugly. But it could get it could get worse. It could get way worse. But I'm just looking, I'm not listen, I never pray on, on the Knicks downfall. I'm a true fan. I always want the Knicks to win. But given given the, the problems that we're having, especially with injury and the schedule that we have moving forward, I don't know, bro. You know, that, that puts me in a weird spot as, you know, I got to be, did. like you said, I got to be a realist, bro. I got to be realistic. No, no. Like I said, I don't disagree with you. I'm just being optimistic because the potential is there. We can't pull some of these games out. I, okay, I agree. I agree. I maybe maybe the Pelicans. Maybe, who knows? Maybe Zion and RJ get the ballot, duke it out, and you know maybe you know RJ gets the grade on top. You know, but um, okay, let's let's because we're gonna get into all that. So let's let's finish these games. So let's go into yeah, the Wizards. Yeah, Washington now. 
Uh, unfortunately, I was there to see this game live with my own eyeballs. Um, believe one, it or one not, six, one sixteen, one oh five. The length problems were in full display. This game. Let me tell you, this game was horrible. This game, there was nothing fun to watch about this game at all. Stevie, guess how many percent from the free throw line didn't help. Guess how many leads we had, Stevie? None. We were down since the jump. I mean, missing all these free throws, yeah, I see why. And shooting 26% from three, yeah. And like you said, them towering over us didn't help. Dude, well, Zingas was looking pretty good out there. You want to know why? You want to know why? Bradley Beal. He had 22, 11, and five assists and two blocks. He was looking like KP of, in the garden, actually. Bro, that's that's what that's what Bradley Beal does, bro. It spreads because look it, we beat them last time. They didn't have Bradley Beal. Do you think the A player was the difference this time around? Of course, bro. You you gotta double him. You have all eyes on Bradley Beal. You everyone knows this. So now he had 18, four boards and four assists. Not a bad game. Not a bad game in his return. Ba oh, wow. Very efficient too. He was seven of eleven. Yo, he was yeah. loosey goosey. He was dancing out there. Oh my, bro, it was hard to watch, dude. I want my eyes wanted to throw up. But look it. In the, in the beginning of the game, when they were announcing the starting lineups for the Wizards, Bradley Beal was the last name called. I was kind of dozing off. Listen, you know, I heard KP. We booed him. Like, boo. You know I mean, we, you know, we all gained up on him. When they said at guard, number seven, Bradley Beal, I looked at my dad. I was like, oh, shit. Put that quarter in the thing. Put the quarter. <laughs> put the quarter down, Stevie. I was like, no way he's playing right now. My dad was like, yo, is that bad? I'm like, yo, this is worst case scenario. I saw this guy. And, yeah, listen, it worked and like a charm, nothing, They're not a bad team either. No, no they're team's not. a bad team if you want to get real in the Wizards NBA. Wizards not a bad team. I guess Nick fans would agree we're the only bad team. I, that's crazy, right? Our own fan base would agree we're, the, we're, we're worse than them pretty much probably. Are we worse than the Wizards? Nah, not at all. Nah, we're better than the Wizards. We got a better record. But like... But I would say we're better than the Wizards. We could beat them in the series. It's the length, bro. With a healthy length. Mitch, with a healthy Mitch, we beat them. We need more length, though. We need... We need... Because... Nah, that's a big problem with the Knicks, I know. Yeah, we need more length. Um, Okay, so Jalen Brunson scored 32 points. RJ had 21. Uh, and Emmanuel quickly had 18. It's nice to see Emmanuel quickly still going through with his strides. You know, you, you kind of want to keep seeing him succeed and grow as a player and he has done nothing but that under tom thibodeau so you know tom thibodeau does have some stars under his belt as much hate as he gets you know so you these are things to look at you know um julius Randle had 14 points 15 rebounds uh he's been dominating the boards lately uh the only problem with julius has Randle no is no mitch the only problem with julius Randle is six he went six for 17 and most of his shots came when the game wasn't even close so he was pretty much non-existent yeah so that this this is kind of the result when your best player you know i i'm starting to think julius Randle is the one on this team i'm not gonna lie because when Randle's doing bad we're losing the game you know what i mean if jalen brunson's doing bad and Randle's playing good we're still in the game if rj's doing bad and Randle's doing good we're still in the game but even if you, you look at Brunson had 32, RJ had 21, and we didn't have the lead once. That's crazy. We didn't have the lead once, bro. Bro, they had our number, man. Kyle, Kyle Kuzma had our number the last game. We, 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 we won that one at the slit at the um we barely won that one the last time we played them because of Kyle Kuzma. Yo, Kyle Kuzma was looking like Kobe, dude. He was hitting step backs. I was like, oh my God, bro. Dude, and then do him. It. Go ahead, bro. I'm Kuzma done. I'm done speaking. And Go ahead, bro. Combined for 49, 67 points. That's crazy. They got their little big three going on against us. <laughs> no, that's dangerous, man, because you can't double anybody on that team. That's the see. That's the problem with the Knicks. You could double. You can double us. You could zone us and double us at the same not time. Not everybody could score. That's the problem. You know, Mitch. we don't have. Huh? <laughs> Mitch Jericho and iHeart. Oh my God! I didn't say iHeart's name. Um. 
So honestly, the okay, the Knicks, the Knicks brought it down pretty close uh, at the halftime. Uh, it was 95, 88, you know, and then unfortunately they just answered back with a, I'm sorry, that was at the end of the game. And right when we were just coming back, they answered with 10 shots in a row. And that's how you close it. <laughs> that's all I can say about that, bro. You know what's crazy, bro? Why? You see this? You see how they beat us? How dominant it was? This is, this is, that's what we need to fix the lead problem. Every, like with the Spurs too, the Ash Wednesday. Day- you know, in a, in in a nutshell, that's pretty much what it is. But not even. Uh, would you would you consider? Um, what's this guy's name from the Spurs? Um, not Vassell. It's the, it's the other rookie. I forgot his name. Um, Johnson or something like that. Would you consider him an A player? Oh, um, Kel- when I Del- killed us the last time. Delvin Johnson, something like that. Kelvin Delvin Johnson. Johnson, I think his name was. I yeah, know yeah. Talking about. He killed us the last time. Now I wouldn't call him an A player, but he could develop into one. He, yo, he was the guy. Every time we were chipping in, they he just had a good it, game against us. But they cut, it, they cut it off. We don't have that ability to cut off runs. When a team goes on the run, they'll run through us nonstop, bro. Like when we drop a lead, we drop it. Not only do we drop it. They'll take the lead. You know, it's not like because we brought it back in this game. You know what I mean? We 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 almost had the Nick come back. I think even Trippy texted me like, yo, Nick come back. I retweeted, like, yo, bro, you would have thought. Cause <laughs> they had us on lock. Every run we went on, they stopped it immediately. It was bro, it was almost like no one was on the court with the amount of shots they were hitting. Nah, that's a fact. The small ball thing, listen, it worked. But dude, we're in the NBA. All right. People watch film. These are professionals. They're going to game plan around it. At some point, you're going to fix it. And if you don't have the length to fix it, it's going to be broke forever until you fix it. So that's what these ass whoopings are all about. Um, let's go to another one. The Hawks. Whoa. whoop de do. You want to take the lead on this one, Stevie? This is a fun one. Oh, man. Like, that one was weird. Like, that's an understatement. That that one felt kind of weird because like, it, it felt like a shootout in the first half that we had control of. Um, hold on, I'm trying to get the score. The fight was good, My man. Bad. The fight the fight was real, man. Listen, well, I like first half it was. I like the grit. I like the pound for pound, score for score. Yeah, but, but that's I, what I'm saying. Like looking at this final score, it doesn't feel that way though. Final score, oh, no, no, Hawks no, no, 139, the Knicks 124. Oh, no, absolutely. It feels that way, dude. We let them shoot lights out, bro. Well, that's what I'm saying. In the in, in the in the in the half the third quarter going into the fourth, them first two quarters and half the third quarter, it was a dog fight. The fourth quarter completely killed us, dude. A hundred percent. I mean, yo, Devontae Murray had 29, Trey Young had 27, and Murray had 12 assists. Jesus. Yo, let me tell you something. When I saw Jalen Brunson guarding DeAndre Hunter, I wanted to throw my remote through the screen. (laughs) Bro, Hunter was fading off of Jalen Brunson as if he was a child. Dude, he he was just... He was turned and faced, and it was like he was doing a shoot-around. It was like he was doing a warm-up, catch and shoot. He He was just warming up. And he looked down for a second. He was like, oh, shit. I'll put the quarter in. He was like, oh. <laughs> he was like, oh, there you are. I didn't see you there. And he just shot right over him, you know. And and then he finished with 20 points. Yeah, be like that, man. Be like that, unfortunately. Yo, the Hawks had our number in the fourth quarter, man. Like, we, we had them that. Bro, this felt like that first game. When we took that lead, we took the 20-point lead, and then we lost by 20. It kind of felt like that. Because we had so much control, and we could have, it kind of felt like we could have blew the, the potential to blow this game open, and then it just didn't happen for whatever reason. It you kind of it, felt like that. You know what's weird? I don't think it was so much control. I think it just came down to, it was, it was a balance scale, right? So I feel like this game is good to kind of just look at as, as a balancing standpoint, right? Like, you know, really, like, just judge it. So what happened was, is we was going power for pound. So like our offense isn't the problem if you have it. So that's that's the that's the 
that's the um um oh my goodness what's the word that's the what's the word stevie stevie no <laughs> the um oh my god what's the word the difference i guess listen so i can't i can't think of the word i can't think of the word so the main theme i'm gonna say the main theme of the of these games is that our offense is good it's not bad it's the defense that's the main theme here our defense is what it's what's losing these games you know at least these last four i would yeah, say it, so it's big Dude, we gave up 139 points. That's wicked. Wicked. We had a lead. And then the Hawks went on a 20 to 4 run in the fourth quarter. Shit was crazy. That was sad to watch, bro. Oh my God, dude. Like, <laughs> oh boy. They uh, outscored throw the Knicks. Throw, the, throw a quarter in there because I curse. <laughs> they outscored the Knicks 37 to 23. So now we have a fourth quarter curse instead of a third quarter curse. We have a defense curse, period. That's weird, bro, because our last we- our last losing streak, defense wasn't our problem. Like, our problems keep shifting back and forth. Because remember at one point in the season, our problem was free throws. And then we started hitting the free throws. And then we started missing the free throws again. And perimeter defense that was a problem at one point. And then it be adjusted. And it became a strength. And now it's a problem again. Like, this is a weird season. So okay, but like this is this this is why I don't really blame Twitter that much because like they're so inconsistent because the team is so inconsistent. So the argument is never the same, you know what I mean? But the whole the thing that's you know, the problem. Since you put it that way, you're right. You know, I didn't understand them. Now I kind of understand them. Now it kind of makes sense a little bit. Like it's it's the argument keeps changing. You know, it's still weird, but I get it. No, don't get me wrong. There's still stuff that's completely out of the pocket which shouldn't belong you know which should even be there Facts. but okay so i think that this is the most detrimental part of the game i think this is what the this is what the finisher blow was so the knicks led 71 to 68 at halftime right um off the rip atlanta came out 13-0 straight out the halftime so matter fact, maybe, yeah, matter of fact i lied i said we started good and i said we started good after the half you're right 13 bad, run. Sorry. That was error on my part. You're right. And then and then, you know, they brought it to 87-74, pretty much. And then that that goes into the the fourth quarter. You know, and Oh, bro, we should have won this game, man. Oh, dude. Would Not you consider really. it? Huh? You don't think so? Not this game. Ah oh, man. We should have won one of the Toronto games. At least one of those. Dude, we should have won this I'll game, I'll say bro. that. Because our offense was toe-to-toe with them. It was our defense. That, you know, our strong suit is what failed us. That's why I feel like we should have won this game. Because all we had to do was just play our game. And we would have won. I could dig it. But I think I think the Toronto games were more winnable than that game, bro. Because they once the third quarter started, we lost it. And granted, we didn't say this. Um, Mitchell Robinson got hurt at the Wizards game. He uh, fractured his thumb or something like that. He had surgery. And he wasn't in the game uh, for the Atlanta Hawks. And I've, and of course, Capella comes back, you know, after like five missed games. You know what I mean? Just when Mitch isn't there. You know, he's like, oh, okay, Mitch is not there. I'll come back. Yeah, yeah that's cool. I think he's scared of Mitch, bro. And I, I don't blame nothing. him. Nothing him and Okongwe killed us. Off the bench, Okongwe had like 14, I think. Okongwe had 14 and seven boards. Capella had seven and nine boards. Not a bad combination. Something we don't have. We don't have combinations. We have a lot of ISO one on one ball, which pisses me off. Is that a curse word? No. Okay, cool. Um Yeah, man. It's a bad game. That was it's a terrible game. Uh so where do we go from here, Stevie? <laughs> For Toronto, the next Toronto game, I guess. Oh, we're, we're gonna talk about the Toronto game? No, no. I, nah, nah, I mean, we lost it for pretty much the same reason. Except yeah. here's one thing that pissed me off about this game, bro. We came back from a 17 point lead, took a three point lead, going into the fourth, and I don't know what happened. And matter of fact, I found the lineup. Hold on, hold on. Remember, I said when the fourth quarter started, I said, "Yo, I didn't like the lineup they put in." Oh I yeah, found yeah. The lineup. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. And there's big right controversy now. with Tibbs on that game too, man. Big, big, big controversy. Where 
yeah. And the controversy you may ask is with Obi Tappin. Obi Tappin was scorching it, my boy. Obi Tappin had four, I think it was four or five from three and five or seven from the field. And what does Tibbs decide to do? Give him All right. 10 minutes. All right. In the third quarter, we made that run. I think our lineup was, hold up. It was Sims Grimes, Brunson, Barrett, and Randall, if I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to see that. Oh, wait. And before I before we, we SH Sugar Honey Ice Tea on Tibbs, right? The Raptors game was Tibbs' first, I mean, not Tibbs, sorry, was Jericho Sims' first start. And I bring that up because everybody and their mother thought Thibodeau was going to start Hartenstein and everybody was going to throw a, a BITC, you know, fit. And, you know, and he didn't do it. So I think we all kind of owe Tibbs an apology for that one. But here's a counter argument to that, Steve. You ready for that? I'm listening. People say, okay, if Jericho is good enough to start, why doesn't he play over Hartenstein? I don't think Jericho's good enough to start yet. So why did he start? Because Hardstein's not good enough to start either. I told y'all that. See? Remember when we first signed Hardstein? I told y'all. He's good in spurts. That's why he comes off the bench. You give him too many minutes, he'll be ineffective. You got to give him a certain set amount of minutes so you can get his like little five, six points and his five rebounds. Because you know he's going to give you the boards. You got to give him that much. You got to give him that much credit. He's going to give you, you the boards off rip. But wouldn't you want that from Sims, though? You, you, you're telling me Sims can't get you six points and ten reba- and, and six rebounds? Well, he's doing that um, starting. He's so, dude, starting. why 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 still use Hartenstein then? Why why not just go to, to Sims? If well, We have no if, choice, dude. Mitch is out. We have to use him. No, no, no. I mean, when Mitch comes back, it's going to go back to the same rotation. Mitch, Hartenstein, no Sims. So Sims is good enough to start. Would you get Why? I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. You I, know what I, I mean? Yeah, 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 why yeah. use him? I mean, why not use him I mean, him who knows? Hardenstein? Maybe this will change it. Because remember, like, Thibodeau takes time to change. Maybe this will be his moment to make that change. I mean, I hope so, because that doesn't make any sense to me at all. If he's good enough to start, why does he not come off the bench? Anyway, go ahead, Stevie. What go ahead? What was that? What was that lineup that you couldn't stand? Uh, hold up. Damn it. You had it. You made me take it off. Sorry. Shit. So, another quarter. <laughs> uh right, here it goes. Uh the lineup that made the run was where are you? Where are you? It was Hardenstein, Grimes, Brunson, Fournier, and Randall. They're the ones who closed out the third quarter. You know, yeah. That lineup was the one that made the run to close out the third quarter. That's crazy. That was the lineup. They should have started the fourth with that lineup. They changed it to OB, who they should have kept in in the last quarter because he was hot. You know what I mean? Even though we did catch up. So that means that means Thibodeau thought that OB would have stayed hot coming off the bench to close the fourth. Pretty much. And he didn't. The lineup to start the fourth was I Hart, so that's OG, interesting. McBride, hmm. Fournier, and Barry. And for some reason, I was not feeling that lineup. I was like, I don't like that lineup starting the fourth. They should have left the third quarter lineup that closed it and then start subbing them. You know what I mean? But they didn't do that. So whatever. And we ended up losing. Listen, dude, tell me when 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 you have a when you have a lineup that has Fournier in it, it's never a good idea. I'm sorry. But he helped them on the run. You gotta give him credit for that, bro. He's who helped us. I'm not saying that he's the reason why we would have won the game, but he bought us on that run. He helped. Well, he helped. I'm not going to say he bought us, but he helped. I'm just being real, bro. I'm telling you what I saw. No, I'm going to be real. I kind of felt like I kind of felt like the change to that lineup took some momentum away. That's just my opinion. At least at that moment. You keep it real, Stevie, and I respect it, but I'm going to keep it really real. You have Cam Reddish on the bench, and you're going to use Evan Fournier. When Cam Reddish can give you threes and defense. When Forney can only give you threes <laughs> with no defense. And you're in a game when you need stops. And, of course, you didn't get the stops. 
Why? Because you had Evan Fournier. That's true. Can't argue that. Tibbs, you make really good decisions. All right, I'm looking at the camera for this one. You make really good decisions. You've made really good decisions. That's not one of them. <laughs> Recently, you have been really messing up, my man. That is definitely the mess up. That's one of the few mess ups you've had. And it's big. These are these are big mess ups, dude. You can, like, you, I don't know what is going on with the Reddit situation. I'm sick and tired of talking about it, but we have to. Because, you know, like, Dude, why aren't you using him? Should we even talk about the rumor? Sure, bring it up. All right, listen. There's a rumor going around that Cam Reddish had said something to uh, Thibodeau um, because of what happened to his minutes after his injury. Because if y'all remember, he he popped off, got hurt. Grimes came in. We went on that five-game winning streak. Never saw Cam again. So he probably was like, yo, what's up? Like, you know, let me. I don't you think know, that happened. That, that's just a Twitter rumor. Well, headphones came out. I heard no validity to that in any way, so I don't know. I really can't say that that happened or did happen, but that's just oh, yeah. a Twitter rumor to me. Yeah, it's a Twitter rumor. Sorry, my headphones came out. But yeah, that's a uh, rumor. That rumor is going around. Um, so that that's why we don't see Cam Reddish now. If that is the case, because like Stevie said, we don't know. If that is the case, um, shame on both these guys. Because one, you know, obviously you're not supposed to be talking back to the coach. Um, but I do feel his his anger because, like, we did bring him to to do what he did. And now Grimes did it. And then you bench him for forever? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, bro. And not for nothing, dude. Grimes, everyone's favorite player, has been looking very mediocre lately. I'm not saying he's going to f- finish like this, but... The past stretch, he has been looking extremely mediocre, dude. Like bench prep, like bench mediocre. He hasn't done know, anything see. special lately. For the for the for the four for we're on a four game losing streak, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll say 10, twelve. He's averaging ten, four rebounds, two assists. What's the what's actually, the actually he's not actually he's not playing too bad. He's shooting what's the percentage? 46%. And 40% from three. Numbers are kind of moderate, though. 10 points, you know what I mean? That's I that's need, bench. I need, I, need that's, more, I need more points. That's a bench player, dude. That's coming off the bench. I, I get it. 10 points is good, but that's productivity you come off the bench with. You know what I mean? That's not something you start. A starter's not going to put up 10 points. So, you know, it's good that he's doing it efficiently, but we, we're going to need more. We, you know, you need more. I agree. I agree. I agree. So... Yeah, that's the whole Cam situation. Um, so, dude, you gotta put your pride. Someone's gotta put the pride to the side and understand what's best for the team. Cause look what's happening in Atlanta with you know with Trey Young and the Hawks. Now, granted, Cam Reddish and Trey Young are definitely two different pieces. You know, they're one's more important than the other. But at the same time, it's the concept. They know how important Trey Young can be for the Hawks, and that he can help them win games. Obviously, we. Just said we're going through a length problem. Cam Reddish is length and defense and scoring. I'm not saying he's going to help the whole situation. Can he stop the bleeding? Of course. Better than Fournier, I could, I could, I could assure you. You know, and this is all back on Tibbs. You know, this is the, this is my problem with Tibbs. At, like how Julius Randle had me last year. I wanted him to do good. I was rooting for him, but he just wasn't doing good. I like Tibbs. I'm rooting for Tibbs. I think he was the best coach at the time. But, dude, he does things that just makes me cringe. I agree. Like, super duper cringe. And, you know, it's I got to be fair, dude. I got to criticize when criticism is due. Now, do I think fire? I did. I'm not going to lie. I did post something on Instagram that, you know, basically said fire Tibbs. But that was just out of, I, I'm not going to lie. I got into my emotional bag. And I did what any emotional Nick fan would do. <laughs> so I would take full credibility on that. No, I do not, you know, coming back to reality, I do not feel we should fire Tibbs because like Stevie said in many episodes, what good has done ha, you know, what good has that done for us in the past? You know. Dude, and he has a winning record with us, dude, overall. Not by much. Wait, whoa, he's coming on the You know, I understand. No, no, it's the, I understand. So it's 103 it's, it's his record is 103 and 99. Yeah, yeah. Bro, when's the last time a Nick coach in a 3 3 year stretch had a winning record. You, you want to, let's, let's go back. 
Mike Woodson. I, one in year. the last three years, unfortunately. He did he did two years and we fired him before the third year. And we actually fired him off a winning season. Not really. We fired him. Like he barely missed the playoffs. Like he missed the playoffs for like percentage points. So he should have got he should have been, been able to finish the job. That's just my opinion. All right, after him, Derek Fisher. You don't know how that ended. After Swaggy, him. Swaggy P F this girl. That's how it no, ended. No, 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 no. No, he... Oh, he... Matt he Bond. banged... He, he banged, banged Matt Bond's girl. That's right. Okay, that's how that ended. <laughs> and then after him, he had Jeff Hornacek. He ain't last... He ain't last three years. He last I didn't, two. I actually, I actually didn't mind Hornacek. Hornacek wasn't too bad. They didn't give him a chance. Yeah. He didn't get a fair deal. And after after Hornacek, Fisdale. Oh, my God. We all know how that ended. And after Fisdale, this guy took his place. Uh, Mike Williams, I think his name was. He didn't do too bad. I don't know if I got his name right. Mike Williams. For the sake of argument, we'll just keep it that way. Yeah. Point being, after him, now it's Tibbs. Three years in, winning record has us competing to, competing for the playoffs. And Fuck. and was in the playoffs and won coach of the year. And, and took us to the playoffs. Why would you want to fire that? Now, granted, like we we're, said, we're he does. We're building towards something, dude. Take the time. He has his flaws. All right? It's okay to be angry. You know, you know. I don't expect, like I said, we don't expect you to enjoy all this mess. Like, it's nothing to enjoy. But somebody um, somebody had said something, and I'm, I'm going to read it, about about this whole thing being a rebuild. Now, I'm going to keep everything anonymous because no no free shout-outs, unfortunately. Shout-out, you guys. <laughs> But, okay, so let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so it says, honestly, this is what development looks like. A lot of us Nick fans don't have the patience for a rebuild, and it's embar- it's going to be embarrassing however, however the season goes. We're young. There were a lot of great takeaways from this year. Exactly. But then somebody, and then somebody be you know, wanted to be a dick and said, Obi playing 10 minutes with Mitchell Robinson out while being in his third year and hits four threes in the quarter is not development. True, too. That is true. You should give him some more time. He was hot. I agree. I can't argue that point. So I also fire him for that. Yeah, a lot of people think it's our coach is the issue. I don't listen. I don't think the coach is the main issue. Tibbs has his problems. Bro. So, so does everyone said? else. Remember, bro, a main problem is need an A player. You don't think Tibbs would be a better coach with an A player? I think, any, I think any coach would be a better coach with an A player. Exactly. So it would actually make him a better coach, you know, because he, he's doing good with no A players. So Exactly. You know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah, so, you know. You can't say we're not a well-coached team. Yeah, his rotations kind of stink at times, but when it's our the players talent. are on the floor, they're giving full effort. And again, the players have not checked out on the coach. You don't fire a coach the players have not checked out on. Now, if you see the players have checked out and they're not buying into this philosophy anymore, then you, then you, you know what I mean? Then you start having those conversations. So okay, you know what? Since we're on Tibbs, let's just stay Tibbs then, because this was supposed to be the last segment. But we'll 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 do the other thing for the last segment. So, some some someone else also said something about it. Said the it's like the Tibbs death rotation or something like that. Um. Damn. So this is a quote, you know, and then I'm gonna let you just decipher what you get from this. So it says Tibbs will never change. So instead, came across this quote from an article prior to his third and final season in Minnesota. Um, it didn't make any sense, and it's no surprise Towns and Wiggins were unhappy. It was impossible not to notice the double standards in Minnesota. Thibodeau preached ball movement and unselfishness while letting Butler and Rose pound the ball into the ground and shoot contested jumpers whenever they felt like it. And while he con- he constantly got on Towns and Wiggins about their defense, he never said a word about uh, Rose or Butler. 
and his head sounds familiar. So I'm guessing he's comparing that to Randall and I guess just Randall. Because no no one else really takes as much shots as Randall does. Which I guess Jalen yeah. Brunson now, right? Eh, I don't know. Is that a reach? Would you consider that one a reach? Uh, Because that is one of Thibodeau's flaws. He does I would have say some to an of- extent. The only reason I don't consider it a reach is because he does play his favorites. I won't deny that. Tibbs has his guys. But then again, every coach has his guys. So, you know, like, I won't say that's... I'm half and half on that. I'm 50-50. I'll say that. Okay. So, one more. One more thing. It says... Um, so, this is this is the cycle. Now, this is the Tibbs cycle. It's quoted. The cycle of Tibbs. It's like people are writing books on this guy. Uh, it says, during this stage, the players get exhausted, the promising starts begin to spoil, and the frustration starts to boil over once Thibodeau's team no longer has the energy left to compete when it matters. The regular season is supposed to be preparation for the postseason, but pacing never occurs to the man who power walks into the practice facility before the sun rises and leaves along after it sets. It was a celebration the Wolves clinched uh blah, blah 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 basically they're saying there's no conditioning here we're we're he's running the guys down the dirt which is why we a lose the energy to close in not only the fourth quarter but going into playoffs we might not even have the energy to compete well we're gonna have to wait and see on that one so for now that for now that's a reach okay but I'll say that. For I'm not going to lie. For, for that, because what he said did happen to the Timberwolves. But for us, that's a way to see. So for now, that's a reach. Yeah, because it said uh, they clinched and then they were immediately deflated and quickly dismissed against the Rockets in five. Because I don't think they look deflated right now. The Knicks don't look deflated to me. Um, like, does he overplay some people? Yeah, but they don't look deflated. Not yet, but I'm guessing that's, you know... Because there's still more games to be had. So he's saying by the end of it. it well, like I said, for now, that's a reach. We, we got to wait and see. I agree. Let's see where that. So we got to see where that one goes. But I, I would say this is more likely than the other one I just read, though. With the whole favorites thing, like, you know, more like hating over. I mean, I don't know, bro. Because look what's happening with, with Cam Reddish. He's saying, oh, you're not my favorite. I'm not going to play you. That's some kid shit, dude. You well, know, that's what put, I said. Put another he quarter his, in there. Just like any coach, he has his favorites. You know what I mean? That's but just bro, how you, it is. You, you don't put that. You don't do that, bro. You got to put what's best for the team, man. You're not a good coach if you think about yourself, man. You, I'm not. Listen, I, again, I say that not to tarnish his name because I know Tibbs is a good coach. Yeah, you're calling out a flaw when you see it. That's it. Dude, that's not what you do. Flaw. Man. Flaw. That's not what you do. You don't you don't pick and choose. It's what best man available. And if you look me in my face and tell me Evan Fournier is best man available, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind, dude. You know? So, okay. Um so fire or keep tips at the end of the day. What what do we say? Fire or keep tips? I'm keeping him. I'm keeping, keeping him, him as well. A but... complete dude. Barring complete disaster, he will be back next year. He has one more year on his contract, I think, which is next year, I think. Yep. So I listen. So next year is do or die for him, basically. This will be historical, though. I don't think a Knicks coach has ever finished their contract. Let's see. That should be a stat. I think that 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 probably is a stat. I gotta look that up at some point. I post it on Instagram. Follow us on Instagram, by the way. Oh, shout out to the pins, by the way. We didn't even shout out the pins. Shaking my head. Come on, Stevie. My bad. <laughs> Don is happy. Remember, remember, bro, I was sick for a week. I'm still recovering. You're right. You're right. That's my fault. I should have known. And I'm if, injured now. <laughs> I'm dead. If y'all see uh, Stevie's hat, you got the pin right there. Point to it, Stevie. Uh, put it on the camera. Hold on. Let me see. Right. Bing bong. It's not. It's a good size, man. I like them. I got them on my on my white hat. Um. Okay. So getting over tips because that's been a very hot topic. Um. Now. Like I said, actually, what I said before, before we got into Tibbs, what now? Where do we go from here? So the deadline is coming to a close. We got two more weeks before, before the trade deadline closes. Um, so far, one one move has popped down the media. Uh, the Lakers had finalized the deal for Harachi, Harachi Mora. It's a good from, look for them. 
from That's the Washington Wizards. That's actually a pretty good look for them. Shout out to the Lakers for that. Hachimura was a pretty good player. Now, not a lot of Knicks fans are actually tight about that because I think the Lakers were interested in Cam Reddish. So a lot of people are saying because they got Harachi Mora, they won't be interested in Cam no more. So, um, and that's another thing I want to bring up before we start getting into like what we actually need and who we're looking for or like, you know, what the rumors have said. Me personally, I don't think we got anything anybody wants, bro. We have Evan Fournier, Isaiah Hartenstein, a Cam Reddish that we don't play, and I'm sure no team understands why. Uh, who else we got? We got Deuce McBride, who gives you no offense, but is a good defender. Um, who else? I think that's it. And Obi oh, Toppin. Of, of course they want those guys, bro. One of them is an expiring contract. Two of them are... Wait, you said I heart moderate contract backup Four. center. Fournier, somebody would take that. Somebody would take him. Fournier's a aspiring contract. Uh, Obi Toppin. I guess he's the best look. He's Dude, best. basically. So what you're saying is like, all right, because from what I'm seeing, is Obi Toppin, Evan Fournier, Cam Reddish, Deuce, Deuce McBride. McBride, and who else? Hartenstein. And Hartenstein are all available. I would yep. assume. Yes, sir. But we're not gonna trade all of those. We're not gonna trade all of them, bro. No, but we minor you... deals. No major. I'll throw it out there now. No major deal is gonna happen. I mean, with these names I got on my list, I I could see that. <laughs> with the names we got on this list right here for who we can get, I I, I wouldn't doubt it. Oh shoot! I want to hear that list. Uh, okay. So let's start first. Um, a big name that actually gets thrown out in the spaces. Shout out to the spaces. Um, uh, is Kyle Kuzma. People nah, want Kyle he, Kuzma. They already said, the Wizards said they're not trading him. All right. Which, they announced that. That would have been good, though. He's averaging 21 points, seven rebounds a game, four assists. Uh, he's shooting 30, shooting 34% from three and 46% from the field. Yeah, Kyle Kuzma has developed into a good player. I congratulate that. And I, I remember you see, he was getting memed on in, in LA. Yeah. I bet they miss him over there. Uh, they sure do. They sure do. They're, they're missing a lot in LA, but not for nothing. They're turning it around over there. Now that they got uh, Harachi Mora, they got the, they got defense now. So that's that's dangerous. And we played them in like three days. So GG's to that one. <laughs> um. Okay. Next one on the list is this one is actually surprising. I didn't see this one coming. Serge Ibaka. Um. I hear him and Grayson Allen could potentially come here in a deal. Well, first, let's talk Serge Ibaka. I got Grayson Allen next on this one. Um, I don't know. I would have to see his contract, honestly. Uh, let's see. He is... Ibaka off the bench wouldn't be a bad look. I mean, it would fit the, the you know, the way Tibbs is playing, it would fit. Because I guess, I guess now, right? what we're looking at in terms of like because Tibbs I don't think Tibbs is going to change his ways the way he plays the way his offense is set I don't think he's going to change um there's not necessarily wrong with that it's just that the guys that we have now just don't fit that system so it just looks worse than it is you know what I mean so now we got to in essence build around the coach right we got to get the players the coach wants and by these by these players, you can definitely tell that Thibodeau handpicked each of these players because they actually fit in the in the offense. Like Serge Ibaka, for example, he's a seven footer. Um, he's gonna do exactly what Isaiah Hartenstein is doing, which is basically just flashing to the free throw line. Because Isaiah Hartenstein is a stretch four slash five, and we don't use him for that purpose at all. He's strictly in the paint. So with Serge Ibaka, in essence, you're getting a better rebounder. And you're getting a more inside inside threat, you know, pretty much. Because Serge Ibaka got a little bit of a bag on the inside. He has, like, a little bit post bag. You know, he's and a good he defender. Has, he's a very good defender. And he has playoff experience. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a good veteran to have, especially at the center. And who knows what he could teach Mitch. You know, Mitch could probably get better <laughs> alongside with him. So this is actually not a bad trade, not for nothing. You know, because at this point, we just got to compliment what we have. Because what we have is working. It's just not complete. You know what I mean? So Got now, me. now we're just because you can't, you can't, you can't say what we have doesn't work. You can't tell me Jalen Brunson doesn't work. You can't tell me RJ Barry doesn't work. You can't tell me Julius Randle doesn't work. 
You know what I mean? Or Emmanuel Quickly or Quentin Grimes or Mitchell Robinson. Those pieces work. It's just everybody else, especially the bench, is not working for our offense or maybe, you know, defense. Right. So next on that list, like you said, is Grayson Allen. Now, if we could get both of those guys at the same time, that's big because Yeah, off the bench, that'd be a good look. That would help the bench a lot. Because not only do you get defense and rebounding with Sergi Baca, but now you get Grayson 40... Allen. Jason Grayson Allen can shoot. Yo, he's shooting forty percent from three. Mm-hmm. And forty four percent from the field. That's what I'm saying. And he's a good defender. And you need somebody like him on the court. He's very dirty. He's a dirty player. Fits New York perfectly. <laughs> yeah. You know what's crazy? Mike said the same thing. I would take Grayson Allen. You know so not I mean? for nothing, out of all these names, I think this Bucks situation it might be the best. I think it's I think it's best case scenario. Well, because I might play GM. I might post a trade. Yo, not for nothing, the Bucks. I see a lot of twi- tweets with Cam Reddish in a Buck uniform already. Like, oh, he's a good old star here. Like, Bucks they're trying fans- to cut salary anyway. They're over the cap. So, dude, I don't know. This might be base case scenario for us, man. Oh, we'll it's play nothing- GM. Do it. Post post it tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yeah, gotcha. Whatever. Gotcha. Um, okay. I can't lie, though. I like that idea. I kind of like the idea of a Baca and Grayson Allen off the bench. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, especially with what we're giving up, you know, what I mean, we, in essence, we'd be giving up probably Hardenstein and, you know, and Cam Reddish. So, okay. Next on this list is our good old friend, Reggie Bullock. He's, his average uh, is- I don't think we, uh, that could happen because remember, like Tibbs likes familiarity. So the possibility is there that could happen. But it doesn't make sense to make that trade. You know what I mean? For all that, just use Cam. I did make a video about that. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion, though. And plus, he's not really getting PT in Dallas right now. He's averaging like six points. He's not really getting play time like that. He's very situational. He's, he's defense. I would give up. You know what I would give up for him? Like, just to get Bullock, just to have that depth. Give up like a second round pick. Yeah. No, yeah. No, honestly. Honestly, I would do that a second round pick or two because we got a crap load of them. I think we're gonna save those for the draft. I think I think we're gonna make a move in the draft. I, I think people are underlooking that. I think we're gonna make a serious move in it because because mind yeah, you, this draft is deep from what I hear. Yeah, it's and coming up is pretty deep. We're in what you call no man's land. Like if we finish the league now, like if we finish where we are now, we'll pretty much get like a 13, 14 pick. So that, that's in essence, quote unquote, no man's land. Um, now it's going to be hard, you know, especially since the, the draft is so deep. So maybe that could work in our favor. Maybe a team, maybe a team above us wants somebody that's going to drop. You know what I mean? Like they know they want somebody that's going to drop down to them pretty much. You know what I mean? Like they, they don't want to draft so high for the guy they want to pick, you know, right, something right. like that. So they might want to draft down. So, you know, anything can happen on that one. Um, but yeah, I agree. Reggie Bullock, I don't think that would be best case scenario, especially with what we just talked about with the Bucks. Um, next one on the list is Alex Caruso. I don't think that's happening. It would be a bad look because he would help them for the defense, but I don't think that's happening. He's actually shooting 39% from three. I didn't know that. I didn't know he was doing so good. He's 43% from the field. Oh, man, he's actually doing pretty good. I don't think that's happening, though. It's just unfortunate that Jalen Prince had to put him on a little highlight. Yeah, he made him have a seat. I don't think you want that. He said, I think you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> he, t- he tucked them in. Yeah. <laughs> he tucked them in. Okay. Um. Last on this list is Zach Levine. Now, Zach Levine was actually one of the first names to pop up in the trade rumors. Eh. So we will put him last on this list. I don't for, see that happening. Reasons. Well, for the main We're reason. We're not making a major trade, bro. We're not making a major trade. We're making, dude, the Knicks are making cap shedding trades, which is pretty much what Evan Fournier is going to be, and depth trades to add bench depth, because that's what we need. We need bench depth. So it's not going to be major trades, but trades will happen. So Zach Levine, I think, is out of the question. I, I agree. I think he would just give up too much, um, and they would, they're going to want they're going to want all the pieces that we said are keepers, pretty much. All the guys that we said are worth getting rid of, they're not going to want that for Zach Levine. Maybe it'll be topping because they're kind of, you know, 
similar, I guess. It's just Toppin could probably grow into what Levine is, which I don't think he will be. But I guess like coming, like looking at it from the Bulls' perspective, they'll most likely want Obi for that reason. Yeah. But I don't think I like you. I don't think they would. If they're smart, they wouldn't pull that trigger. And if they do, I mean. But it, I think it would still hurt us regardless. His his contract is too big. You know, that's a lot of money to have on one team. Um, so we, we'd have to dump a lot to break the cap. So honestly, I think the best move. And you know, it's crazy. When I was like setting everything up for the show, I was just looking up names. You know, you know, just to get everything in order. But actually talking about it and breaking it down, Serge Ibaka and Grayson Allen are the best case scenario. As out of everybody we just said, those two is and, and it's doable. Yeah, without actually hurting us in any way, shape, or form. Agreed. You know, we keep we keep assets most likely. We keep most of our assets. We get rid of the players that we need to get rid of, and and we accumulate defense and offense all in all in one trade. Facts, I agree. And I length, much you know, needed, much much needed. But Grace, he's not that tall. He's six four, but you know, taller than most guards that we got. He'll back up, he'll back up Grimes. Well, Grimes backs him up. Whatever. Uh, no, I think I think I think he backs up Grimes. I think he, I I rather him come off the bench real quickly because that's two three point shooters right there, coming off the bench. Good point. That would be wicked. That would be crazy. So yeah, honestly, and this trade could make this little trade could make a big difference for us because this is what we need. So you know this could be the deciding factor. So I'm not gonna lie, out of the two, I really like the Serge Ibaka idea because it does fit Tibbs's offense you know because he doesn't really do too much pick and rolls with the second unit and not for nothing i really don't like the one-on-one he does the the island ball um i think that needs to be fixed but i think once we get these guys it it, it would like force to be fixed because you can't go one-on-one with Serge Ibaka on the court you know what i mean like his man is gonna double you at all costs so you're gonna have to run a lot of pick and rolls with him and could you imagine a pick and roll with him and Emmanuel quickly? Nah, yeah, that should be crazy. Oh, another quarter. <laughs> yeah, I, it was well worth it though. I, you know, I might let that one slide. <laughs> that one was well worth it. So honestly, yo, listen, that's what we got for y'all today, man. Listen, I hope y'all, I hope y'all could like, you know, come out this this episode feeling a little better about yourselves. You know, it's it's gonna get bad, or it's gonna be a rough see. schedule going forward, y'all. Let's say that. Yeah, have faith. Strap in. That's all I gotta say. Strap in. I gotta just be in the Cavs next game, bro. I'm sorry. We beat nope. them before. We can beat them again. Don't apologize to me, bro. You ain't gonna apologize for. But um, yeah. Listen, don't look at the main thing to get out of this right again is like Thibodeau has his flaws. Um, what are you gonna do? He's he's the best coach we've had so far, and all he needs is is help. You know, I think it's a talent issue. I think that's the main problem with the Knicks. Like Stevie always says, you know, we have a, we have a lot of average Joes on the team. And that's um, not bad. Not saying that they're not pieces. They are pieces. Randall's a piece. Bro, look at it this way. I've said it many times. The Knicks have cornerstones. Randall, Mitch, Barrett, Brunson. It's four cornerstones to build around, dude. We got something going. Well, speaking of Randall, right, he is actually currently – uh, second in total rebounds and fourth in total points in the league. No, oh, really? Yes. So Luca is one, Tatum's two, Alexander is three, Julius Randle four. Ah, big shout out to Julius. And then total rebounds, it's oh wow, his rival, the Monte Sabonis, and then Julius Randle. Nice. So, dude, I mean, if if you don't think that's an all-star, I, yo, I hope y'all still vote in New York. Don't think we forgot. I voted. Y'all better stop. I, I voted, voted every- twice. I voted three times, actually. My fault. I vote every day. I got the app, so it makes it way easier for me because I didn't I didn't like looking it up. If y'all don't have the app, download it. Um, NBA vote will be in the des- If you're watching this on YouTube, link will be in the description. Our social medias will be in the description. Look everything in the description. Everything is there. Um, pins will be in Pins. Yeah, everything is there. Stevie, give us your final words and your final take. Uh, it's going to be a rough road going forward. I read the schedule out earlier. Just have faith in the Knicks. 
We'll be all right, man. We're gonna win some games. We're gonna lose some games. You just gotta take the good with the bad, y'all. We're on a road. We're on a road to a rebuild, and it's not like before where we're headed nowhere. We're actually headed somewhere. We have pieces. We have cornerstones. We have things to build towards. There's hope. Just don't, don't, don't overreact to the way things. You know what I mean? Don't, don't overreact to the ugliness. You know what I mean? There's a method to the madness. This is my point. Take you with a grain of salt, man. Because at the end of the day, like we said, it's a rebuild. You know, when you're rebuilding something, pieces are going to fall. Things are going to break. But, you know, you got to work through it, man. It's a rebuild. You know, mm-hmm. and it, it's it, I'm not going to lie. It's been a productive rebuild. We got Jalen Brunson. Mitchell Robinson has been playing outstanding. Now, imagine we didn't resign him. And he does what he's doing somewhere else. You'd be even more tight. You know what I mean? You'd be you'd be tighter. You know, so you gotta take you gotta take every the good with the bad. You know, overall so far the season, as ugly as it's been, it's been good. All right. Overall, because at the end of the day, we're still over five hundred, so it's good, right? It it is now being more noticeable the things we have to fix and what we're lacking. Which is good because now we're we're making progress. We're learning and seeing what needs to be fixed. And I, it's the obvious is now the three point shooting and the length, right? So and depth, and bench depth, and depth. So and you know and and as of right now, the defense is struggling. You know we're having a hard time stopping teams from scoring. But like Stevie said in the beginning, it's inconsistent. Like one problem is this, one problem is that, one problem is this. That's what happens with a rebuilding team. And we have to remind ourselves, like I have to remind myself because I'm I'm still very young. All right. I am a young man. I tend to fall in my ways. I tend to fall in the, the youthful rookie ways. You know what I mean? I get in my bag, in my emotions, and I tend to say things that don't really make sense sometimes. I will take full accountability of that. But for the most part, Steve, you can account with me on this one. I'm on my P's and Q's because it's kind of my job to be. <laughs> but um overall listen we thank you guys for rocking with us uh we're again we're sorry that this episode's coming out on tuesday i was watching the cowboys get their ass beat yesterday so you know unfortunately a next anonymous episode was lost for nothing but we are here um i'm lj he's in the building and he's healthy again you already know how we do man we love you guys uh we'll see you guys next week peace